effect. There's chills going up and down. We're not we're not musically trained. Um, we have a sense for story, and I think that after our first conversation, you at least I felt like, oh, we're in great hands. It's it's um, style of animation that feels very um, innocent and tender, but also very. Um, elegant and sophisticated at the same time. And they really capture that variety of uh, emotional tones. And yet, like Robert said, everything feels like our movie. And that's, to, I, I'm assuming it's really hard. Uh, visually, it's so it's hard. It's easy. I mean, it is. <laughs> it just it is. Kind of an atypical animation project between the aesthetic, like the just the visuals of it, but then also the way they decided to tell kind of a, um, a pretty deep story, a very important story. So. Every step of the way, meeting people like this along your journey um, gives you energy to kind of keep going, to finish. And uh, Zach and Mateo were just, it was fun to talk with them on Skype calls, to talk about the score, to talk about the music. I worked with Dice before on a project called Sketch Travel, um, and that was really fun, really amazing. And then when it came time to make this one, I knew the short was going to be sort of like bigger. And Everything about Zach and Mateo's score felt very sweet. I think that's like the main adjective I would use to describe their score. It felt tender, it felt sweet, it felt innocent. Um, I think just the story of this like innocent character who is um, undervalued, underappreciated, um, an outcast. You have to remember that like this is every day for him and it's it's not like an unusual pain for him. It's a very like, he's just used to it. So you don't want to be like overly dramatic about it. It's like you want to, you, you know that there's like a tinge of sadness about it, but at the same time it's just like, this is it, this is average, this is how it goes. Watching Mina conduct, I have to say there's something about watching someone who is incredible at their craft, incredible at what it is that they do, um, that it's so mesmerizing. When I saw the uh, picture during the recording session, you know, it was definitely like an emotional experience. And a lot of my players also said that they couldn't watch the film when they were playing because it, they would just like, you know, get too pumped or something. <laughs> you know, I stepped out of the room and I came back and she was explaining our story to her musicians and she was crying, you know, trying to explain what the story of the Dam Keeper is about. And that's how much she was invested and, and it was so touching. The thing about that though is this dice that are very like nice and very sweet about it. They're like, this is what we think you should do. We don't know if we're right or not, but can you try it? And it's like, yeah, of course. And, and just, I would say, almost all the time they were right. Yeah. They made it way more elegant and subtle than we would have. Mm -hmm. But like, they were so willing to let us be ourselves. They weren't like, I want you to sound like this composer, I want you to be this composer. They're like, we want you to do what you do already but make it work for our story. Mm -hmm. And so that was like, it felt good from the get-go, being like, oh, I get to just be myself. By the end of it, like you said, each piece comes in and adds something to it, and it becomes richer and fuller, but um, it's unlike anything I've ever experienced before. I don't know. I feel like everything about this process has spoiled me and has made me want to do nothing but this for like the rest of my life. Yeah, I think it's all downhill from here. <laughs> That's pretty much where we're at. <laughs> Unless so. Dyson Robert asks us to do another one. <laughs> yeah, exactly.